Hi everyone, I'm with the winner of the 2016 NCHA 5000 Novice World Champion, Tom Long. He's from Nevada and he rode He's Gotta Be Good. Congratulations to you, Tom. Thank you. Now, this was a tight tussle coming into this, this race, essentially. Um, you were in second. Tell us how you were feeling at the time. Well, it was, it was a race for quite, quite a good while. And coming here, we, there were three horses that could have got the job done. And it was going to just how the chips fell was what was going to happen. And I was fortunate enough that the first run to, to have a good run, uh, Gavin, who was leading it, his little mare had just come back from being injured and wasn't really ready, okay, uh, and she just didn't perform to, to where she could, okay. Well, that gave me the, the difference that day to go ahead and catch him, okay. The last day of the deal, it's, it's knotted up tight, tight with three horses. And by what happened the first day, and I, I was third the next day, Gavin was second, but the average is what made the difference on the on the whole the whole weekend mike uh won the the show championship here okay but he ended up third to to me and gavin in the deal okay, okay. and it looks like um your consistency paid out you had a 219 and a half and a 218 and a half so um that's probably got you over the line well it and it did you know and, and that little horse is that way he's been that way all year for me you know he may not make the 25 run but he will be right there knocking on the door and he doesn't He's a real, real cow horse, little guy and a guy, and he doesn't make a mistake on a cow. So that I think that's what carried him through this this deal here. Especially coming from my country, we cut a lot of steers out there, and they're a lot different than these little quicker heifers down here. And being the fact that he reads a cow like a border collie, I think that made that transition where he could stay and be consistent instead of you know if you make one mistake down there with the caliber of horses that were there you're going to be out of the cutting okay and he was able to be just head to head all the time and that's what those guys were looking for you know a clean clean run and some physicalness was going to get you there and that's what he did so how was the whole year was it back and forth between the three of you yeah. mike wood and gavin jordan all year long all year long it would be and and gavin uh has helped me all year, okay, and I, I'm in his corner all year, and he'd win one, I'd win one. He'd win one, I'd win one, or he'd just take off and be a genius and win for five or six days and really make me mad, but he helped me all year long with this deal, and it, and we knew coming here that it was going to be a, a shootout between the, the deal, and I guess, you know, if you're going to Super Bowl, that's where you want it to be, yeah. you know, so... It's a fascinating aspect of the sport that you do help each other and that even though um, he might have lost, he can take a little bit of pride in the fact that you won because he was a small part of that and vice versa. Oh, it, he, was, he was fantastic this week, especially in that last run because uh, I drew deep in, the, in that set. Uh, and he was instrumental in finding the cattle that I needed to go. And he'd already made a leading run, okay, but he was still trying – his butt off for me to have a run that could beat him and I had good enough run I didn't beat him but I had a good enough run to make my average beat his okay so you got you got to take your hat off to guys like that and that that's the main thing that, that cutting is really about is the camaraderie that we have here because we try to make the other guy beat us kind of crazy but you know why am I taking money out of my pocket well you've helped me so I'm going to help you you know and I don't know another sport really that works that way <laughs> quite honestly you know so. so tell us about your horse and how he got the name well he actually he is the first colt to be born by my stallion which is cat's got a diamond okay and he's out of a dual ray mare and when he hit the ground his next name's benjamin okay and there was a a movie that was on benjamin peck or some darn thing where this guy looked mature as a baby well when this colt stood up I mean, he just looked just like that stud, and he looked like a, an older horse, okay? So my grandkids nicknamed him Benjamin, okay? Well, he had ended up with a different registered name, and Phyllis Sorbet, who owns the colt, <laughs> uh, she didn't like the name, and I didn't either, okay? So she got to talking and said, hey, we can change that, which I didn't know you can before we uh, uh, show one, for not very much money. So she starts thinking about names, and they're writing these all down and the whole deal. And she's on the phone with me one day, and, and she said, 
you know, we got to come up with a really good name. And I, I, I said, Phyllis, look, this Colt has got to be good. He really does. With this combination, he's got to be good. And she just stopped on the phone and says, well, that's his name. And boom, she just sent it in right then. So that's where he came with, he's got to be good. Yeah. Self-fulfilling destiny. Oh, and you know what? The nice part is that it worked. You know, it had been terrible if it had been a dink. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm I'm riding on the horse. With, well, you wished he was got to be good. <laughs> but I think it's a great tribute to that little horse that he he stayed sound all year long, and for that much time we were doubling on him, and he just he just kept trucking, kept going. You know, so he's going to get a little time off now. <laughs> he's earned it. Thank you very much for joining us, Tom. And congratulations. Thank you very much for having. Me.